I do want to get to some breaking news that we are following out of the Middle East right now. Israel confirming that it has eliminated 16 terrorists, and many of them are top commanders of Hezbollah's Radwan force in a strike Friday that killed one of America's most wanted. Ibrahim Akil, the head of Hezbollah's military operations, died in that strike in Beirut. Now, he was wanted by U.S. authorities for the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. That was back in the 1980s. Hezbollah now says the strike killed two of its most senior commanders and 14 other terror group members. These are just some of the photos that were released by the IDF. Tension between Israel and Hezbollah does continue to intensify after this week's electronics explosions that Hezbollah says was Israel's, quote, declaration of war Important to note, though, Israel has not claimed responsibility for those attacks. I want to bring in a friend of the show to discuss all of this. Dr. Asaf Ramorowski is the executive director of Scholars for Peace in the Middle East, joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you as always for having me. All right, so first off, the big question here, we know that a top commander of Hezbollah has been eliminated in this strike in Beirut. How significant, uh, significant is that elimination? Because we're talking about a, a top military member. So this is a major uh, success for the Israelis, if indeed was done by the Israelis. Uh, Ibrahim Akil uh, was one of the masterminds of the Beirut bombing of 1983, uh, cost him a lot of American lives, uh, there was a bounty on his head for around $7 million. Uh, the U.S. should be thankful for the Israelis if indeed uh, confirmed that Israel took Akil out. And they should, be, they, of course, justice has been served. Um, you know, it's, it's worthy of note, of course, that all the masterminds of the Beirut bombing, you know, as far as what we're seeing now, we see between Fuad Shukr and Ibrahim Akil, uh, there's slowly a clear uh, taking out of the significant leadership. Now, it's also important to note that the Radwan forces are the top commando frontline aggressive forces that have been doing the SWAT team uh, aggressive forces from Lebanon into Israel. So they are the elite team uh, of, um, of Hezbollah. So again, there is a clearly a moral victory and a psychological victory for the Israelis, the fact that Hezbollah leadership have been slowly but surely taking out. It's important, of course, to remind everybody that every one of these individuals has, has significant blood on their hands, and if they were allowed to continue on, there would be uh, risks and more deaths to innocent Israeli civilians uh, throughout, you know, uh, whatever continuation that they would do as far as their operations. Uh, so this is a major victory all along. It's also worthy of note at large, just to kind of uh, unpack it even further, is the fact that the pager operation that you were referring to, you also see the significant capability of the Israelis from kind of high-tech to low-tech. Uh, uh, Hezbollah was already aware that they should not be using smartphones. Uh, Nasrallah himself has warned his commanders not to use smartphones and any kind of uh, cellular phones altogether around because they knew Israel could hack those phones and could break them. Here you have a, a significant kind of a going back to low tech, going back to the 1980s uh, and the 90s of being able to infiltrate pagers as far as how Hezbollah has been able to communicate and in a succinct, really domino effect, we're able to uh, hit the button and to take out significant leadership, 3,000 uh, of Hezbollah top commanders. That is a major success story from an intelligence perspective and also show that the Israelis are moving from defensive to offensive warfare as the war continues throughout and goes is really shifting its efforts towards the northern part of Israel. What about the U.S. involvement here? Would the U.S. support, so to speak, a war between Israel and Hezbollah? Obviously, the two are already at war, but talking about a full-scale war, would the U.S. really uh, be on the side of Israel and, and maybe help out, support Israel in that war? They should. 
I mean, the fact of the matter is that Israel has been fighting the war with Hezbollah. There's rockets been barraging Israel since October 8th, you know, the day after the war began on October 7th. Uh, there has been a ongoing salvo of a uh, barrage of rockets that have been going in constantly into major towns and cities in the northern part of Israel. Approximately 80,000 Israeli citizens have been displaced and removed um, from those towns and cities. And so if you remember at the beginning of the war itself, uh, we sent um, ships, we sent cruise missiles to the area in order to give a signal and really show deterrence that uh, Hezbollah are attempting to basically deter Hezbollah and Iran from continuing the war from the northern part into Israel. That, of course, was not that effective because, of course, this continues on. The fact that Israel, um, if indeed confirmed, is taking out masterminds where they have clear American and Western blood on their hands should be a clear validation for the fact that Israel is fighting also America's enemies. That's been the case from the beginning. This is part of the larger regional war of Iranian proxies that Israel is fighting at least on seven fronts that has that represents a larger threat not only to the region itself but also to the United States. And to my mind, um, if the United States, regardless of who comes to power uh, in November, they should be very clear about the fact that we need to win this war on terror and to go after the masterminds and the people who are representing um, a larger threat to the U.S. and Israel and, uh, and, their, and our allies at large. Could a full-scale war, if it were to happen between Israel and Hezbollah, could it lead to Lebanon as a whole, Beirut, starting to look more like, like Gaza? Potentially, the, 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 from, a, from a kind of a framework ge geopolitical challenge, of course, um, Hezbollah is a state within a state. That is the fact that Lebanon is still a, is a state uh, and the fact that this is, will change the war of the, the the entire dynamic at large there. There have been negotiations uh, over the past few months, as we've seen, between Israelis and Lebanon. Um, the Biden's um, Middle East envoy, Amos Hochstein, has been to the region many times. There's been attempts to try to create uh, some kind of maritime co you know, negotiations regarding calm between the Israelis and Lebanon. Uh, but to your point, uh, unfortunately, Hezbollah has been using Lebanon and Syria, for that matter, as their playground. If you look geographically speaking, um, Hezbollah represents the, the contiguous line of Shiite presence all the way from Iran all the way to Lebanon. And Hezbollah has been utilizing and playing this game all along. Uh, there are voices in Lebanon that, of course, understand the threat of Hezbollah and to want to try to marginalize Hezbollah. But, of course, Hezbollah also has a strong support within the Lebanese parliament. They've done a lot to solidify their control in the area. And from my perspective, I would say that Hezbollah has also been harboring terrorism, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and whatnot. And so from that perspective, they are a state sponsor of terrorism all along, and they are indeed part of the patrons of 10-7, namely because of Hezbollah. So to that end, uh, so long as Hezbollah is still in the area and in the area where the Israelis have been hitting, as far as the area of the Darkia area, as far as Beirut itself, that will only continue. The next step could potentially be, which is, has to do, of course, with boots on the ground, that'll be a another shift or another kind of an offensive move from using the Air Force and cyber technology into an actual full-out war. France's president uh, the other day did actually tell Prime Minister Netanyahu that he's pushing the region into a deeper war. What does that mean significantly coming from France? Is that a significant statement to tell Netanyahu that he's pushing the region into a deeper war? The Europeans are a little bit conflicted as far as the larger issue at large. I think within European circles, there's still a very much a growing desire in France at large as far as the configuration of France and as well as northern African Arab countries and, and citizenship that are affecting uh, French politics. 
see a desire to create calm in the area and desire to try to move along a what they define as a two-state solution. I would argue that there's really no players to really have a two-state solution with at this point in time. Uh, to that end, I think that there is a concern, of course, in Europe and in France in particular, as far as the growth of Muslim immigration that is coming into European communities and has been coming into Germany and France and other people who have ties to these many Islamist organizations, including Hezbollah. So, of course, there's a, an ongoing warning that there is a fear that an ongoing war, a full-blown-out war, to basically look at Mac, uh, what, the, and what, what Macron is saying, that that will have an impact on French immigration policy and how the French will have to deal with the consequences of Israel moving this along. Historically speaking, it's also worthy of note that there has been a long historical stance of French presence in the area of Lebanon in the old days, that is to say in the 1970s and 1980s, that's no longer the case, but there is an historical connection between the French and Lebanon in particular. Um, but that's where a lot of these voices are coming from. I would say that from a national security and a national interest perspective, uh, voices coming out of French, of France are indeed important, but not important enough to deter Israel's larger goal, that is to say maintaining the safety and security of their citizens in the northern part of Israel and in the southern part of Israel.